Lots of us use Windows as an operating system to use 3D software. But what about those who use Mac operating systems or Linux? You see, each operating system has its perks and limitations when it comes to 3D work. And after digging through various forms and seeing real-world tests, I think I've got a solid take on this. So let's go through what each operating system brings to the table, what's frustrating about them, and which one might fit your needs the best. Before we continue, let me quickly introduce an asset manager that works on any platform. Have you ever wasted hours searching for an asset that you know exists but you can't just find? Maybe you don't remember the file name, or worse, you are stuck opening dozens of files hoping to stumble upon the right one. Managing a growing asset library can quickly spiral out of control. Files scattered across folders, cryptic naming conventions, and the constant frustration of switching between software just to preview a single file. It is exhausting, time-consuming, and downright inefficient. Blueberry is an AI-driven asset management tool that makes managing your assets quick and easy. With the built-in 3D preview engine, you can manage 3D assets directly in the browser, so no need to launch separate software and it support over 100 3D file formats like Max, Maya, Blender, and much more. Also, there is a multi-model AI search, which lets you find assets not just through text, but also using images or a vague description, such as rusted texture or low poly house. On top of that, you may also appreciate features like automated tagging, version control, and large file transfer, as well as seamless integration with all major 3D software. So click the link in the description and check out Blueberry AI right now. Generally speaking, Blender is cross-platform, meaning it technically works the same whether you are on Windows, Mac, or Linux, but technically doesn't always mean practically the same. The operating system you choose can affect performance, compatibility, and how much hassle you will deal with when it comes to drivers, updates, and certain parts of your workflow, like rendering, animation, and so on. Choosing Linux, for example, based on the tests people did, can give you 10 to 50% improvement in rendering speed. But is this even possible? It is no secret that most Blender users are using Windows. This makes sense for several reasons. Windows is the most widely used desktop operating system. It runs on a huge range of hardware configurations, and many 3D applications like Blender, Max, ZBrush, Maya, Substance, and so on are designed primarily with Windows in mind. And for many professionals who use creative software, having everything under one roof is a major convenience. Now, performance-wise, Windows does what it needs to. It offers full support for both NVIDIA and AMD GPUs, meaning you get to take advantage of technologies like CUDA, Optics, and even HIP for GPU rendering in Blender. If you're lucky enough to have a high-end NVIDIA RTX card, you benefit from accelerated ray tracing through Optics. This is a major plus when you're working on complex scenes that will rely on realistic lighting and shading. In addition, many third-party plugins and tools that work with Blender also tend to favor Windows for compatibility reasons. That said, Windows isn't without its drawbacks. One of the most frequent complaints among Blender users is that Windows can feel bloated. This is the case because there are always background processes running, like system updates, antivirus software, and so on that can eat up your precious resources. Add to that, some random updates right in the middle of a render. Another issue is that Windows might not always be the fastest option when it comes to rendering speed. Benchmarks using tools like Geekbench and the Blender Benchmark have sometimes reported that Linux comes out ahead, especially in CPU-intensive tasks. While these differences might not be critical for everyone, if you are dealing with large complex scenes where every minute counts, even a small percentage improvement can be significant. In one detailed test, Linux systems delivered significantly faster rendering and simulation times. This is especially the case in comparison to Windows, simply due to fewer background processes and more efficient resource management.
Now let's talk about the Mac operating system. And here is a fact. If you're using Mac for Blender, you are using a Mac hardware. This means you're stuck with whatever Apple has to provide. No flexibility to mix and match components. And while Apple's build quality and ecosystem have their fans, hardware limitations affect Blender's performance. Historically, Mac operating system wasn't the first choice for Blender users. So when Apple dropped OpenGL in favor of its proprietary metal API, GPU acceleration for cycles rendering became unstable or unavailable at times. Fortunately, with Apple Silicon M1 and M2 chips, Blender's metal integration has improved, making GPU rendering viable on newer Macs. However, even with these improvements, the Mac operating system still lags in rendering performance. You see, benchmarks show that even a high-end Mac Studio renders significantly slower than a Windows operating machine with the same price, for example with NVIDIA RTX 3090. Apple's integrated GPUs and hardware constraints means you won't get the same performance as a custom-built Windows or Linux system. And this leads us to something else, and that is upgradability, which is also an issue. If you buy a Mac with 16GB of RAM, that is all you will have. In contrast, Windows and Linux desktops allow for upgrades over time. On the other side, Blender runs fine on Mac operating system, and the streamlined interface and fewer driver issues can be appealing to a certain extent. But for professional 3D artists who need maximum performance, Windows or Linux is often a better choice. It's not that Blender is bad on Mac just that the hardware limitations make it less ideal for demanding 3D work. That said, if you are using M1 chips or newer, the Mac operating system is still a solid choice for tasks such as video editing or graphic design. Between Windows paid licenses and Apple's expensive hardware, let's talk about Linux. If you want Blender to run as fast as possible and you don't mind some extra setup, Linux might be your best bet. Many users report significantly better performance, with some tests showing up to 49% faster when it comes to rendering and simulation times. This is the case compared to Windows. Other benchmarks show a modest improvement. Geekbench scores, for example, often place Linux 2 to 6% ahead on average. Performance gains depend on hardware, drivers, and workloads. A key reason for Linux's speed is that it is lightweight, I mean when it comes to design. It runs fewer background processes compared to Windows, dedicated more system resources to Blender itself. You see, optimized compilers and efficient CPU scheduling further enhances performance, making Linux popular for render farms and large-scale 3D production. However, Linux is not without its challenges. For example, setting up drivers, especially for NVIDIA GPUs, can be sometimes tricky. Though the community has made progress in simplifying the process, and software compatibility is another factor. While Blender works great, many professional 3D applications are Windows-only software. So if you rely on multiple tools, dual booting or virtualization may be necessary. On the other side, Linux gives you full control over your system, allowing you to strip away unnecessary services for even better performance. And this is what matters. And here is the interesting thing. High-end render farms favor Linux for its scalability, and many users report noticeable performance gains after switching. Some discussions also highlight improvements ranging from 5 to nearly 50% as we said, depending on the scene and the hardware. Linux also offers solid GPU rendering support, and Blender Cycles Engine supports CUDA, Optics, and AMD's HIP, just like Windows. In addition, the open source nature of Linux means you often get access to cutting edge drivers and optimizations sooner. That said, many Linux distributions are heavily bash focused, meaning you often have to rely on terminal commands for tasks that are simpler on Windows. This can make them difficult to use especially for those unfamiliar with Linux. And if you want an experience similar to Windows while still benefiting from Linux's performance advantages, Linux Mint is a great option. You see, it provides a user-friendly interface, 
and a polished out-of-the-box experience compared to more technical distros. It is ideal for those new to Linux or anyone who wants smoother adoption without sacrificing performance. And if you rely on Windows-only software or prefer a plug-and-play experience, Linux might not be the ideal choice for you, despite its advantages. But if you enjoy tweaking your system and don't mind using the terminal, Linux can be an excellent option if you are using Blender. To wrap things up, choosing the right operating system for Blender comes down to your specific needs and experience, of course. But generally speaking, Windows is the easiest option for most users. It offers full hardware support and runs a wide range of 3D software and doesn't require much setup. And it is a solid choice if you want something familiar in addition to being reliable. That is, without too much hassle. However, it is worth noting that while it is user-friendly, it may not always deliver the fastest rendering times, especially for CPU-heavy tasks. The Mac operating system can work well if you are already part of the Apple ecosystem, and especially if you are into video editing alongside Blender. With the newer Apple Silicon chips, Blender's performance, to be honest, has improved, but it still lags behind compared to dedicated Windows or Linux systems, particularly for complex tasks. For me personally, I would use a Mac when using 3D software just for the sake of portability, because a MacBook usually have great battery performances. Linux, on the other hand, is the top performer when it comes to Blender, and that is especially when it comes to rendering and simulation, where Linux has a clear edge. Generally, it is more efficient with system resources and can speed up your workflow significantly. But as I said before, setting things up can be a challenge. So if you don't want to be uncomfortable, probably you should stick with Windows. But if you want to create, for example, a home render farm, like if you have a couple of PCs or computers laying around and you want to use them as a render farm, then you should work on your personal project using Windows and then render them in that homemade render farm using Linux, because it will save you a lot of time and resources when it comes to rendering. And there you have it, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.